Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, this is the third lecture in the mini series um, which defines different inverse trigonometric functions. In this case, we're talking about arctangent. This is the function which is inverse to tangent, obviously. So, before talking about arctangent, uh, let's talk about tangent. And what's very important about its graph, um, the main range, these type of things. So, tangent is uh, the function which you can uh, define as sine over cosine of an angle. Now, let's build the graph. Well, if you remember, it's great. If not, I'll just try to kind of derive the graph from the graphs of sine and cosine. So if this is pi over 2, this is pi, this is 3 pi over 2, this is minus pi over 2, this is minus pi, etc. So sine goes from 0 to 1, and then to 0, and then to minus 1, etc. minus 1, 1, etc. That's how sine goes. Now, cosine is symmetrical. It goes like this. Etc. So, when we divide one by another, sine by cosine, obviously uh, at points pi over 2 and minus pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2 and minus 3 pi over 2, where the cosine is equal to 0, we will have asymptotes. Now, here, if you divide this graph by this graph, you will have 0, here, because numerator sine is equal to 0, and the cosine denominator equals to 1. And then the graph grows, and finally it grows to plus infinity, because the denominator goes to 0, and sine is 1. So it goes something like this. Now, similar in this case, uh, the situation is uh, very much alike, except it's negative, because the sine is negative and the cosine is positive, so when you divide one by another, you will have negative results. But also, in this point, you have an uh, asymptote, and it goes to minus infinity. So this is our tangent. Now, after that, it goes... Um, uh, by a period of pi. All right, so knowing what the tangent is, now let's talk about what can we say about inverse function, arc tangent. Well, obviously, this function, as I have uh, represented it in, in red, does not have an inverse function because for any value, there are multiple arguments, the function in each of those arguments function takes the same value. So you cannot determine by the value of the function tangent, by having y defined, you cannot define x. And we will do the same thing with the tangent as we did with sine and cosine in exactly the same situation, which means we will reduce um, the domain to the area where the function uh, is monotonic, which in this case, traditionally, it's from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. The function is monotonically increasing, and it takes all the values from the range, from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, we wipe out everything around this, as if it does not exist. And we are left with the function which we can call a new tangent or whatever, which is defined 
only for uh, interval from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Um, I don't remember if I mentioned it before, but whenever I'm using parentheses, it means the boundaries are not included. Whenever I'm using square brackets, that means the boundaries minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 um, are included. In this case, we cannot include boundaries because that's where, the, where we have asymptotes. So the function is not defined at minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. It's defined in between. That's why I have round parentheses here. So this is my domain, my range, and uh, my codomain are all real numbers. So this is the uh, this is the domain, and this is the range. Now we can define an inverse function. R tangent of x. Well, the sense of this function, the meaning of that function is, well, inverse. If you have um, uh, some kind of a value of the tangent, we can find the angle uh, in radians, tangent of which is equal to x. So that's what the meaning of the inverse function. Now, obviously, the x can be any value which this function takes from the range, which is minus infinity plus infinity, and the, um, and, and the range of the function, so this is the domain, and the range of the function would be the domain of, of the uh, tangent function, which is minus pi over 2 pi over 2. Now let's do the graph. Now, we know that there is a symmetry between the graphs of the function and its inverse function. Symmetry means uh, relative to the angle bisector. I think I need a new picture. This doesn't look good. would look like this. Minus pi over 2, pi over 2, this is x, this is y, and the graph looks like this. That's my tangent. Now, if I will reflect this relative to the angle bisector, that's how it will be. My range would be from minus infinity to plus infinity, my, uh, sorry, my, my domain for this function. My range would be from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, which is uh, pi over 2, and this is minus pi over 2. So whatever asymptotes used to be, they will be turning into my basically maximum and minimum, and the function would look like something like this. Symmetrical relative to the angle bisector. So the range is uh, the range is from minus pi over two to pi over two. The main is all uh, real numbers. And that's the graph of the function arctangent of, uh, of x. It's quite an interesting function. What's interesting about it, it can be basically modified. And uh, right now, it's from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. But we can actually adjust it with proper multipliers and shifting, etc., to any range. And I was actually thinking that function function like that, and this is a practical implementation of something, function like that can, can actually be 
uh, used in, uh, in some practical situation. Namely, um, we know that we have something which is called a, a, a progressive tax, which means that the percentage of the tax of the taxation is greater with um, uh, base amount uh, greater. Now, what it means is that you might have some minimum uh, taxation, and uh, you can have a maximum taxation, and the percentage grows from the minimum to the maximum, well, in something like this type of a fashion, right? So we can actually establish this, instead of minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, we can establish this graph from A to B, basically by adding something and multiplying something by this, by this graph. And also, we can um, regulate the steepness of this curve by multiplying x by certain uh, factor. So it, it can be used for the purpose of defining a very simple formula. OK, this is the formula for taxation. Whatever you earn, just multiply by this percentage expressed as arc tangent with certain multiplier here and multiply here and maybe um, horizontal shift, and, and you'll be fine. So that's, that's one of the practical implementation of um, taxation using function, function like this. So it, it gradually moves towards certain asymptote on both sides. All right. That's it for um, arc tangent. Um, I, I do recommend you to go to unisor.com uh, to this lecture, to notes for this lecture. Just read it again. I think it would be very helpful. Other than that, good luck.